everybody, welcome to today's video, a simple overview on how to integrate citations and references in your essays. And this video is particularly aimed at nurses, nursing associates or support workers writing academic essays. So what is the difference between a citation and a reference? A citation is where you provide the author's name or it could be the name of a professional body and the year of publication in um, the main bit of your essay. You could be sharing a quote or paraphrasing the author's work, putting it into your own words. Whereas references are placed in your reference list at the end of an assignment and they provide the full details of the reference and where it was sourced from. So I'm going to go through how to integrate citations in different ways into your text and also present a range of different example references. For example, how to um, reference a book, a chapter in a book, an article, an online paper, a trust policy, or even a blog, a podcast, or video, or newspaper, because people nowadays are using a range of sources. So I hope you find this video helpful. So some of you might also be interested in another video that I recently uploaded on how to write in third person. And my videos are all free on my YouTube channel, so do check them out. And I'll be doing some more videos on writing and academic skills in the future, because lots of students have asked me for those. So the first thing to say is always adhere to one referencing style. What you don't want to do is mix referencing styles. Check your university module handbooks and which referencing styles they allow, such as Harvard, for example, which I'm going to use for examples today. Many universities you know, might say you can use different referencing styles. Um, some might prefer Harvard. Um, and the key thing is that you, know, you can choose whichever that they're allowing, but that you are consistently using one referencing style. Many university libraries have got helpful online practical guidance too. They might even have leaflets you can take away. And this guidance provides, again, clear citation and referencing examples. And so always check what's available in your library. The other thing you might want to do is look at a citation and reference management tool such as EndNote, RefWorks, Mendeley or Zotero. I'm not going to say which to choose, it's up to you what preference there is. But what you might find is that some universities offer free online versions of these tools to use while you're a student. So you know, usually you have to pay for this, uh, these tools. So if you're getting them free with university, it's definitely worth using them. I didn't start using EndNote until I started my PhD, and that was because the, the university provided free online EndNote. Um, and what EndNote does, it allows you to go online onto a database like CINAHL, click on the reference, and it will download the abstract, the article, if, if it's in a PDF, is available. And then it holds it in this digital repository on your computer. So when you do your dissertation or doing a PhD or master's, it's very helpful to find authors from, for a, from a specific paper, for example. Um, you also don't ever need to do a reference list again, which is wonderful. Um, once you've got your EndNote downloaded on your computer, whenever you open your Word document, you'll see an EndNote tab. So you're working on a document and you click on EndNote and you just write add a citation, you pick which citation and then click it's really easy to use it doesn't sound it but then you click on your document and the year the citation the author and the year will be automatically put on that document and then it will automatically provide the full reference in a reference list so you don't have to write your reference um i went to a group session on endnote but i'm not very good with it i wanted to check that i'd done it right so i also booked a slot one-to-one -one with my librarian and brought my laptop in and had a bit of extra teaching so do check that as well because um it's don't be put off because initially i was thinking oh, i'm not going to be able to use endnote but i got there and once you've got it downloaded and you know what you're doing i would just literally use it for citations and reference lists i think there's other things you can do with it but that's the main things that i use so what types of sources will you be citing and referencing it's standard that you've got some empirical data and research from journals or books, or you might wish to cite from a specific chapter in a book. Um, nurses often also want to quote from online reports and publications. So we've got national, professional bodies, legal bodies, a charity body or, or the government. There may be a government paper that you wish to quote. Um, the NMC 
standard or a statement from a charity such as Marie Curie End of Life, for example. Then you've got trust policies. Often they need to be anonymised. These usually should be um, a, often there will be a report or a policy. Some may be publicly uh, released, but usually NHS trust policies um, are found on their tr the specific trust, local trust intranet, and access to those sites is only available to employees, staff, students, and not open publicly. Um, and then you've got blogs, podcasts, videos are becoming much more popular newspaper articles, images from books or articles. Um, and you'd be using, if you're using an image from a book or an, an article, you'd be adhering to the same referencing standards as you would for any book or article. Um, and then you've got secondary references and citations. So if an author has included a reference from another author, ideally you should read the primary reference, the book or the article, but if you can't, um, you can write cited by with the author in the end. I'll present some examples of that later. So if we start with a simple reference, I'm using Harvard referencing style for a book. So you initially start with the author's surname, a comma, the initial of the author, full stop. Then the year of the book is in brackets. We then have the title of the book, How to Thrive as a Newly Registered Nurse in italics, another full stop. If the book isn't first edition, you should put second, third onwards edition. That doesn't need to be in italics, but you need a full stop after second edition. And then we have the place of publication, a colon, and then the name of the publisher, which is Lantern Publishing Limited with a full stop. So I've also provided examples if you've got more than one author. Um, so it's very similar to the other one. However, when you write the um, authors, if you have three or more, you may use et al. Um, but if, you, if you've got three or less, usually you put the three full authors. So I've got Johnston here, comma, C, full stop. And you'll notice a comma after that first for Johnston and then Jones, comma. You'll also notice if they've got a middle name and it's on their publication, you should put D dot A dot and then comma. And again with Smith, you've got an and Smith, comma, H dot A dot because they've provided two initials um, on the actual paper. But otherwise the uh, reference is similar. Um, and then C comma, um, sorry, for Johnston, comma, C, et al, et al, and then it's a full stop. So I hope those help you. You might also want to um, present a source that you found in a chapter in an edited book. And if you do, both sources need to be acknowledged. And ideally, you should always read the original source, find out the original paper directly. But sometimes you need to reference a chapter in a book, for example, um, and or a quote came from this chapter. So you would start with the author. So we've got an example here for Johnston. And this is a chapter that I did was, was in this book. Um, so for Johnston, Johnston for the surname, comma, C is the initial with a full stop. And then we have the year of publication, which was 2017. And then we've got the title of the chapter, which is post hospital nursing care with a full stop. And then we put in in a capital I and N um, is lowercase. Then you have a colon and then the author of the book was Lumley, comma, J and the, it's edited that he's the editor of the book. So Ed's is put in brackets and then you have a full stop. You then have the title of the book it was in. So Aging Don't Embrace Panic, um, Don't Panic, Embrace the Challenge, a full stop. Then where it was published is London, um, a colon again. And we have Westminster Publishing Limited, which is the publisher with a comma. And then you have the page numbers of that chapter. Um, and when integrating the, this source into your narrative, or you might be paraphrasing, it would be um, Ford Johnston in bracket 2017 as cited in Lumley 
bracket 2017. Um, so that's how you integrate it into your narrative in your assignment, because you need to acknowledge both authors, as I said. So now I've presented some examples of referencing a journal article and you'll see there's similarities to the book. You start off the same with the author surname, comma, and then in the initial full stop and then you've got brackets for the year. But what you'll see is the title of the paper is not in italics. Instead, the journal, the name of the journal is in italics. You then have a comma and then the volume number of the journal is written 31 and then the issue is in brackets, which is 42, comma, and then you have the page parameters. So the start of that article and the end page. Um, I've also given an example for multiple authors, so three authors, and then if it's any more than three authors, uh, you have an example there with et al. Um, but so, so I'll just let you read them. I'll leave that up for a second. And that they are the examples for articles. So sometimes when you present references, you might want to put the online link at the end. And um, the online link will be linked to either a DOI, a digital object identifier, or a URL link, which is Uniform Resource Locator. Now, the DOI is a unique number given to some articles, papers and books by the publishers. So sometimes you'll see it at the top, the DOI at the top of an article, whereas a URL is the web address. And if you use a DOI number, you don't need to include available at or accessed on at the end of your reference because the number will not change. But if you use a web address, a URL address, may the URL um, number may change and be updated or even deleted, which is why you need the extra information of when you accessed it. So on these two examples, if you were going to include the DOI number at the end of this reference, the first reference, you just put DOI in caps. So you write your reference like you would normal for this paper. You then put DOI in capitals with a colon and then you add the DOI number with a full stop. The second example is using a URL. So at the end of the reference, you would put available at semicolon and then add a HTTP web address. And then you'd put in bracket brackets accessed on and then the 29th of September 2023. So hopefully I hope those help. So for online papers, reports or standards, you start with the name of the um, corporate body or professional body that is has published. In this case, I've used an example, Nursing Midwifery Council. In brackets, I've got the year of when the standards were published, 2018. And then you have the title of the publication in italics, full stop where it was published, if that's available, sometimes it isn't on some papers, a colon and then the publisher. And again, sometimes that might not be available. Um, but if it is, put it as a full reference. Um, you've got your full stop, then you put, um, you might need to put a URL link available at with a semicolon, and then you add your URL address, the web address. And then you must always, if it's a URL web address, put accessed on with the date in brackets and full stop. So sometimes you need to reference, um, you want to integrate a trust policy or a procedure, for example, and they've got to be anonymised. They're not publicly released documents. So you will ask, access those policies and guidelines on a trust intranet as an employee or as a student, and they're not available to the public. So you would just put NHS trust, you don't put the name of the trust. In brackets, you would put 2000, whatever year it was, sorry, and then the title of the policy, for example, in italics, and then just put confidential document in brackets. We now have many people writing blogs, and you might want to include um, paraphrasing or a quote from a blog. So you would put the author, comma, the initial of the author, full stop, the year of the blog in brackets. This is one that I did. I have written this blog. Um, so the title is From Failing Nursing Finals to Starting a PhD at 52 full stop. So that's in italics. And then you would write in capital I, lowercase n, semicolon. You give the name of the blog. So Carol it came from my website, Carol Ford Johnston web blog, um, full stop. And then um, the year and the date, sorry, which is 28th of April 2021, full stop. 
available at and add the URL and then in brackets accessed on with the date. So I hope that's helped. If you are referencing from a video or a podcast, you start with the username or the screen name. Um, I've got a video out, so I've done an example here from my YouTube channel. So it's at Carol Ford Johnston is the name of the username of the YouTube channel. And then in brackets, 2023, I've got the title of the video or podcast, how to write in third person, full stop. And then you have the upload day and month date, full stop, available at, and then you add the YouTube URL um, address, and then, or it could be a podcast address, and then in bracket, accessed on with the date and full stop. So I hope you find that helpful. So if you want to write up a reference for a newspaper, this is a made up reference. I didn't write for the Daily Mail. Um, you have the author's surname for Johnston, comma, initial, C, full stop. You have the year of the publication. You have the title, which is Nursing Lives. And then you put the newspaper in italics with a comma. You then put the date of publication and then the page number with a P. So they know it's not an issue number or a volume number, for example. So let's look at integrating citations into essays. So firstly, paraphrasing. So paraphrasing is when you're putting what an author has said into your own words. So I've got an example here. You only need the author's, author's surname and the year of publication in your narrative. So Ford Johnston, bracket 2023, highlights the importance of structured support for newly registered nurses. Or you could say Ford Johnston describes or argues or suggests we need more structured support. As long as it's in your own words, so you're paraphrasing and rewording what Ford Johnston says. If it's more than one author, you might put Ford jo Johnston, Jones and Smith, 2023, highlight and they are the authors of that paper. If you've got too many authors, you might put for Johnston et al, 2023 highlight. If more than one citation or source, you can are saying the same thing. So if um, two papers are saying the same thing, for Johnston et al and James 2028 highlight the importance of. So you can integrate, you know, and show wider reading if you know that, uh, you know, several authors have said the same thing, for example. You can also paraphrase and place an in-text citation at the end of a sentence. Um, and so I've got an example here. UK nurse educators highlight the importance of structured support for newly registered nurses. And then you've got a bracket and you've got the authors that have highlighted the importance of this support. So it's it's a great way of showing wide reading and integrating your references without writing lots if you're short of words, for example. Um, and if you notice, I've placed the order of the authors alphabetically. So for Johnston, James and Zephyr are written alphabetically. There must be semicolons. So you, what you're doing is just putting the, or within those brackets, you're putting the author, um, the author's surname and with for Johnston et al. Um, and then J, you know, if it's an et al or if it's, um, up to two to three authors, uh, to three authors, sorry, on one paper, you would, you know, put James, um, Johnson and Smith, whatever year it was. But in this case, we're using a towel and notice the semicolon. Then we've got James as an author, comma, 2023. But you don't have brackets for those. Um, they're already within a bracket for those years. Um, and what's helpful when you do this is that it shows wide reading and you might be able to sh so you can show off your wide reading, but also um, you can then drill down on what specifically or what themes these authors, uh, what their focus was. So for, it helps you with your analysis. So for Johnston et al. 2023 emphasizes the need, emphasize the need for lifelong learning as newly registered nurses should have access to clinical supervision throughout their career. So all of these authors have said 
that newly registered nurses need support. But what does for Johnson, what's their focus? And then in comparison, James and Zephyr have written extensively on preceptorship support for newly registered nurses. So for Johnston is clinical supervision. And then you're saying that the other authors focused on this other area. And these are really simple examples. And I'll be doing some videos on critically analysing literature with some example text in future essays. Um, but as I said, this citation at the end of a sentence is also very helpful. So I've got some more narrative examples with integrated citations that demonstrate wide reading. So several researchers have evaluated nurses' use of electronic patient record systems, comparing pre and post deployment of new technology. And then in bracket, the list of um, studies, empirical studies that have um, compared the implementation of EPR. Um, or you could write this as several researchers have evaluated nurses' use of electronic patient record systems, comparing pre and post deployment of, of new technology, such as, and then give just one or two or three, such as Ford Johnston and Wisner et al. Or you could present um, another way would be significant research studies conducted by Ford Johnston and Wisner evaluated nurses' use of or two widely referenced studies. Um, but you can see this is helpful for the word count because you and also for your analysis showing that you're sort of linking the, the studies, especially in di a dissertation time, lin linking your studies together um, in themes almost. Sometimes it's difficult to paraphrase what an author is saying, or you might feel a direct quote really sums up your topic area well. And so if you're going to present a direct quote, you need this example here, you need to include the surname. So for Johnston is the example. In brackets, you put the year as you would usually, but you must always put a comma and then the page number, a P and page number within that bracket. So an example is for Johnston 2023, page 10, stated that you then have a um, colon and then you would put what they say in italics and in quotation marks. So newly registered nurses deserve structured support and carry on with the um, with the quote. But just remember, it's fine to have a direct quote as long as it's not too long. So you want to pick out the best bit of that quote. And you also don't want too many direct quotes because it takes away from the flow of your work. So it's helpful to paraphrase, as I have showed you in the previous um, slides. And it's also helpful for the word count if you paraphrase as well. Sometimes you might want to include just an odd word or a small phrase from um, a, a bigger quotation. And that's perfectly acceptable as long as you make it clear where those odd words or phrases came from. And you use single quotation marks um, are used for a quote within a quote. So an example here is Ford Johnston et al. 2023. Give the page number. Conclude that digital algorithms is the two words I want to highlight in single quotations are influencing and changing contemporary nursing practice. Again, I want to highlight in single quotations, which may affect others. I might go on and, and talk about that. Um, so it's a great way of, of just picking out bits of phrases, for example. Another way to present might be suggested by Ford Johnston et al that digital algorithms uh, are influencing and rapidly changing contemporary nursing practice as um, so there's different ways of doing it, but um, these examples I hope will help. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do check out my other videos such as how to write in the third person, how to improve reflective essay writing, um, looking at your nursing dissertation topic and research question or aim, writing aims and objectives. I've also got lots of videos linked to assignment work, such as person-centred care, quality improvement, leadership, um, and I'll be doing some more videos on critical analysis and synthesis and trying to improve those marks in assignments in the future. So do let me know if you've got any questions in the YouTube comments or you can DM me on Twitter or my website. Good luck with any assignment work that you have and do check out my books. I've got two books um, that are very helpful, one for newly registered nurses, but it's got lots of references in that second and third year students might find useful. And um, a book on how to prepare for interviews and develop your career as a nurse, with lots of personal statements and lots of advice for interviews going 
right up to band eight. So if you're interested, you can see the links in the description in the YouTube channel.